welcome for this session number 2 on plastic processing in session 1 we discussed about basics of plastics now in this second session our main objective is to understand the plastic processing methods so plastic processing and then plastic processing categories then various manufacturing processes of plastics and then a uh, one process that is injection molding of plastic we are covering in this lesson now as far as plastic processing is concerned as we discussed in the first session plastic in this over a uh, hundred plus years in this period has emerged as a very crucial material and it has emerged as a substitution material to many materials which are in commercial use so it has substituted lot of materials and very offers lot of advantages so we can plastics can be machined cast form joined and we, with the relative ease and again a very good cost quality and time requirement the ultimate objectives of any process plastic serves and fulfills it uh, very well compared to other material so it requires a low temperature less energy then we can produce it in any shape cost is less all these properties plastic serves that's why lot of methods are there for plastic process so for example in this slide we see the plastic uh, processing uh, methods and again its applications also extrusion is a method which is used plastic extrusion which is used for long uniform solid or hollow complex cross section and this extrusion is a high production rate cost is less it serves a very good dimensional tolerance injection molding gives me of plastics uh, complex shapes of various sizes so all assembly is again eliminated high production rates the only thing is some costly tooling is there but uh, when the production rates are high you can justify this uh, or uh, the, you can justify the rate of this and you can attain economy and also offers good dimensional accuracy structural flow molding foam molding blow molding as far as hollow thin walled parts of various sizes are considered it is, it offers high production rate and low cost so like this rotational molding thermoforming compression molding transfer molding and casting these are the plastic processing methods each one is having its unique features and mostly they serve the ultimate objectives of cost quality and time and that's why any type of a requirement is concerned plastic is having its processing method its equipment and its economically as well as technologically viable so the society of plastic industry established a classification system in 1988 to allow consumers and recyclers to identify different types of plastics manufacturers place and its special codes or number on each plastic product so categories of plastic given by the society of plastic industry like type is shown there polyethylene pet means polyethylene tetraphthalate that is used for soda and water containers waterproof packing hdpe means high density polyethylene that is for milk detergent and oil bottles toys plastic bags then low density polyethylene ldp plastic bags garment bags etc polystyrene ps throw away utensils meat packing protective packing all these are produced with the, so this identification like hdpv pvc ldp or polypropylene like this materials polystyrene and these codes are given there so 
1 to 7 the codes abbreviations are also given and their application range is also mentioned. So, the categories of plastics and its use and its common abbreviations serves the purpose of the types of plastics that you can deploy or satisfy the requirement of production of those materials. Manufacturing processing of plastics, there are various methods you can uh, utilize to process the plastic. One, most common is casting. Second one is molding, third one is injection molding, fourth one is compression molding, fifth one is extrusion and sixth one is lamination. So, we saw here the methods, lot of methods, each one is having its unique characteristics and fulfills our ultimate objective requirement. So, casting is filling a mold and then the hot melted plastic is poured in that and then the required you know casting is produced with the help of that. Then molding is melt processing, polymers are deformed with the aid of applied pressure and it results in a finished part. So, molding operation the parameters are time, temperature and pressure. Another one is injection molding that is pallets are fed into heated cylinder where they are melted. The screw rotates uh, much like extrusion molder and then it pushes the melted material into the die and then uh, the most widespread technique for using 3D configuration uses a reciprocating uh, screw or plunger and then it is rated by clamping pressure of a die. So, this is the molding process we are going to see just now. The plastic processing methods which are commonly deployed and commercially available are extrusion, injection molding, blow molding, vacuum forming, compression molding, calendaring, strip heating and rotational molding. These are the methods which are commonly used for plastic processing. Now, let us see the application of injection molding of a plastic. So, the stages of injection molding let us see first and then the demonstration will be shown here. First stage is plastic powder or granules they are fed from a hooper into a hollow steel barrel which contains a rotating screw. And then the barrel is surrounded by a heater which melts the plastic material as it is carried away by the barrel uh, along the barrel by the screw towards the mold. Now, the screw is forced back as the mel melted plastic collects at the end of the barrel and when a sufficient charge of a melted plastic has accumulated, a hydraulic ram forces the screw forward injecting the thermoplastic through a sprue that is a small channel into a mold cavity. The pressure is kept on the mold until the plastic has cooled sufficiently for the mold to be opened and then the component is ejected. Ejector pins are there, those ejected. So, the same process is shown here. The If you see the process, there is a hooper shown into that those powder or a granules are fed into a steel barrel. So, hooper which is uh, shown here where uh, the powder or a granule uh, is fed. And then the steel barrel which is shown there uh, with a rotating screw, the barrel is surrounded by again heater. So, the screw is forced back as a plastic is collected at the end of the barrel. Now, again in the second diagram it is shown, once a sufficient charge of melted plastic has accumulated at the end of, a, at the end of that mold, then a hydraulic ram forces the screw forward and then it injects the thermoplastic through a sprue into a mold cavity. So, that is shown in the second diagram. So, now here it is the thermoplastic resin pallet in the form of powders or granules they are fed to the hooper. So, here these resin pallets for injection molding they are shown here. These are fed to a hooper. The feed screw is filled and if you see the hooper and then it is uh, fed to that barrel where it is having a rotating screw and it is again the barrel is with the 
heater. So the heating system continuously melts those granules and then the polymer injection when the sufficient amount of melted uh, that plastic is available at the end of that the ram hydraulic ram forces it and uh, through and then it injects into the that mold cavity through a sprue. So polymer injection is shown here and after that polymer injection the component is ejected. So it is having ejector pits. So it is shown there the component is ejected. So we saw three stages here in the two stages the hooper or powder or granules they are fed then it is reaches to that barrel which is again the heaters are mounted on that continuously it heats and those granules when they are heated they attain a plastic state and then that rotating screw with, with a hydraulic system forces it to the end of that hydraulic system and then when sufficient amount of plastic material is in that state liquid state is available it is injected through a sprue into that mold cavity so these are the resins which are used and then feed, these are the resins they are fed to hooper then feed screw is filled once it is filled the polymer injection into the mold through a sprue is shown here and once that is allowed for some time for solidification and then it is ejected so that split mold is shown there and this is a measured amount of a molten thermoplastic is driven by a ram past a heating system into a mold. This is again shown here, upper granules are fed, a hydraulic ram fluid from hydraulic pump, it operates, it forces it, there is a split mold shown there and when it is material is injected into that mold and then split mold with the help of ejector pins the final product is ejected. So a split mold A is shown there, B is the heater, C is the hooper through which the granules are fed, D is the hydraulic ram and the E is the spreader. Uh, so that is shown. So that function of the spreader is uh, to heat and melt molding material and using even an in inner heater also and plus it creates a back pressure for better mixing. So simplified diagram of this process is shown that sprue runner and through gates it enters it fills completely that the mold cavity and then injection molded parts they are shown the sprue, the gate, the runner and the product. So this it is a split mold it injects the uh, after uh, attaining the sufficient uh, uh, you know solidification stage then it is ejected so materials which are used for this both thermoplastic and thermosetting materials are used epoxy phenolic nylon polyethylene polystyrene materials are used process is very accurate process uh, if you see the features it gives a good surface finish we can produce complex parts very little waste or net shape manufacturing takes place. So we can produce bowls, buckets, containers, toys, electrical parts, etc. And they are again recognized by distinctive circular mark caused by pins used to remove the objects from it. So advantage of this injection molding is complex 3D shapes can be produced. Excellent finish. We can process variety of thermosetting and thermoplastic material. It's very quick. It's very good for ma mass production as well as batch production. Only disadvantage is expensive setup. It is viable only for the long production runs. So practical examples are shown here of the injection molding which are used in the field. So this is a very important process which serves the purpose and the components once again if you see this variety complicated components can be produced to a, a net shape now that means with a very little waste and with dimensional stability and dimensional control uh, after understanding this first process injection molding let us understand through some quiz questions whether we precisely understood the subject matter or not 
the first question is which of the following material is not made by injection molding four options are given nuts tubes car handles and electrical fittings the answer is b tubes are not produced with the help of injection molding what is the minimum temperature allowed to be to the injection molding process that is in degree centigrade so four options are given there a is 120 degree centigrade b is 130 degree centigrade c is 140 degree centigrade and d is 150 degree centigrade answer is d that is 150 degree centigrade again uh, plastics are uh, the basic characteristics of the plastic in weight four options are given there very heavy light negligible and heavy obviously the plastics are light in weight the fabrication we are discussing the processing of the plastic lot of processes are there the fabrication cost is for plastic four options are given there high low moderate or very high obviously the fabrication cost of the plastic is very less again the plastics are the properties of plastics are very crucial the four options are given there semiconductor conductors conducts at above room temperature or insulator plastics are insulator answer is d and next question is thermoplastic becomes dash on heating that is soft on heating so four options are given there rigid molded soft and brittle so they become soft and heating so here the uh, explanation is also given that is the plastics are very good insulator so they are considered because of that as a good engineering material to this reason also and thermoplastic resins as we all know the basic property of the thermoplastic they become soft and on cooling they become rigid reversibly so the thermo setting resins are molded on it so that's all as far as this session number two is concerned and in the next se session the next plastic processing method will be discussed